All right. Hey, everyone, welcome to the very first call of Nebula 2, where we will be training you in the NASA Open Science 101 uh, cu curriculum over the next six weeks. Uh, we're delighted to have you here. I understand we have about 19 different countries represented right now, which is exceptionally exciting. So um, in these calls, we always go through a little bit of... Uh, what people often call housekeeping, uh, just to make sure that everyone is participating on roughly the same footing. Uh, so I'll do that for two or three minutes and then we'll get into the fun stuff like learning about why we're here and getting to meet one another. Um, so first of all, hi, I'm Yo. Uh, I am the executive director of OLS, which sounds fancy and exciting, but I hope I'm a normal and not scary person despite the scary title. <laughs> um, and I, let me see, what, if I remind myself through, through the notes, I won't get lost. Ah, yes. First of all, uh, we, you may have noticed that this call is streaming. Um, now, what I would like to say is I am definitely not putting us on YouTube or anything like that. Uh, and actually, what is happening is um, Otter AI is automatically processing the words that are spoken in the main room so that it can also provide a written transcript. And this can be useful for many reasons. Uh, for example, if I'm speaking fast and you don't catch my English correctly, I apologize. First of all, that's not cool, but sometimes I do it because I get very excited. But it means that you can maybe read along instead. Uh, perhaps you're hard of hearing or deaf, um, or perhaps you easily get distracted, or, or you have ADHD, or maybe you're in a hotel room and you don't want to speak loud because it's 3 a.m. There's a lot of reasons why sometimes someone can't participate using um, audio or using a voice. Um, and so we offer Otter AI as a way of following along alternatively. So over on the top right of my screen, I can see something that says Otter AI, click here to open live transcript. Uh, or there's also the option to follow along on line eight of the Etherpad notes. Um, I, I, it's, it says Framapad, I may call it Etherpad. The words are interchangeable. They both mean the notes that are multicolored and really gorgeous. Uh, so let me see, I've gone through Otter. Uh, we're recording. For those of you who've just recently joined, please do go to the notes. Um, line 28, you can add your name. Tell us who you are. Tell us where you are, because that's just super cool, seeing the number of different places we already have participating. Um, and other things that you may choose to share. It might be that you want to share some social. It might be that you share pronouns in anything that you think makes sense to share with others. Um, this is a place to do it. If you look at the color that everyone has and you think, goodness me, I'm just that I'm not feeling that blue today. Over on the top right of the screen, I can see a little icon that says 19. It, the number will change depending on how many people are using it. Um, but it's uh, it's sort of a yellow button. And if you click on that, you can actually change your name and you can also associate a name with yourself. So that when people hover over what you're typing, if they're using a mouse, then they can see who typed it. So, for example, if you hover over any of the bright yellow that I've typed, then you'll see that it's actually Yo who um, spoke, who wrote that particular thing. Uh, and we will add the link again into the uh, Zoom chat in just a moment. Please do continue to be chatty, laugh, be friendly, etc. in the Zoom chat. We do love that. I, I always enjoy getting distracted by the Zoom chat. Uh, like, I'm not joking, I genuinely do. That wasn't like sarcasm or anything. <laughs> um, can you save the auto transcripts? Um, I think you can request to do so, but what we will do with the recording um, is we will actually upload it to YouTube um, and we get one of our uh, team members in OLS to review the transcripts, look at all of the weird stuff where it's like completely misinterpreted what we've said, correct it so that it's actually useful. Uh, so that might be the one that you want to see and that's always available when we upload it to YouTube. Um, okay, right, I've moved down on the etherpad. If you've signed in, that's beautiful. The next section, uh, line 46 right now, we'd love to see why are you here? Um, we'd love to know what you're looking forward to. 
A lot of people are looking forward to meeting people, to networking, and to learning from a diverse crowd. Um, I'm looking forward to that too. I really, really am. I'm not joking. This, um, this is one of the best parts of doing what we do. Uh, okay, but apart from that, I think I've done all of the fun bits. Uh, <laughs> so I'm moving further down. Um, so I've told you about the recordings. We've told you about captions. We've reminded you webcam on if you don't mind it. Faces help give the speakers reactions, but webcam off is completely reasonable. You don't need to justify it or have any reason, uh, especially since we're recording. Um, and the last thing before we really, really kick stuff off is the code of conduct. Uh, so we'll talk more about this at the end of the call. But the main thing is that we, uh, as someone mentioned in the um, icebreaker, we do have a really diverse crowd. And what happens when there's lots and lots of people from lots of different backgrounds is it's really, really easy to misunderstand things or to think you're being polite, but actually for someone else that comes over incredibly rude. And actually you've both been fine, but it's a culture or a norms difference or something like that that's uh, causing a conflict. Um, and so what we want to make sure is that we're treating one another with the respect that we would like to receive, uh, or with the respect that, that we think the other person would like to receive is perhaps a better way of putting it, uh, the platinum rule rather than the golden rule. Um, and we want people to feel like they're safe and like if there's anything that happens that uh, for some reason isn't in line with any of those desires to be safe, to feel um, confident, to feel friendly, then that there's there's something to do about that. So if you're looking at the notes on the Etherpad, line 67 to 69, we have a few email addresses. Um, and what, what uh, the, the, the too long didn't read version, as I mentioned, be thoughtful and kind to one another. Um, but if you witness or experience anything that you think really isn't in line with the sort of behavior we should get from one another in a call like this, then um, you can report it to team at weareols.org um, or if you actually think, you know, it was Yo who did this, so I'm not going to tell Yo, Yo, you've actually really been awful, then you can contact others. We also have email addresses for individuals as well. Um, anything else, Irene, or do you want to tell people what OLS is and why we're here? Yeah, thank you, Joe, for the amazing introduction. Uh, we can go to the other presentation. Let me share my screen. I need to find the button. Um, share. Can you see my screen now? Okay. Um, so, hi, everyone. My name is Irene Ramos, Irene Salsify. I am the Nebula Program Coordinator. I am based in Mexico City, and you will be hearing a lot from me. You have already heard a lot from me from the welcome emails and the application acceptances. Um, and so this is our first session of the program that we're running in collaboration with NASA. We're very happy to have you here. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about OLS as an organization, um, our approach to open science, and also the motivation behind the program. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat or in the notepad. We'll keep an eye on that, and we will answer them at, at the end. So we are a nonprofit organization dedicated to capacity building and diversifying leadership in research. We imagine a future where, we, where research is accessible, inclusive, and equitable, and we're very committed to this vision. Um, so why are we here and why are we running this program? I'm sure you all have an idea because you already put the effort into applying and joining. Um, and what we believe in ULS is that Science and society advances best when research is shared with others. And in fact, when people have the opportunity to participate in the scientific process from beginning to end as researchers, as students and as citizens. Um, and sharing what we're doing with each other so that everyone can benefit from it, it's the way to make things the strongest and most effective. But we know that this isn't always easy. Um, how do we work openly without becoming scientifically vulnerable? Um, 
there might be concerns about getting scooped, about people, people pointing out a mistake, or other reasons why someone might be cautious about working openly. We're also seeing a change in the research landscape where funders or organizations are increasingly expecting um, researchers to comply with open policies and not always providing the training um, and the skills to do that. Um, so there might be a lot of scattered information that makes it overwhelming to get started. What we want to try uh, is to help break down as many of those barriers and work towards um, a cultural change that helps people share their work more responsibly, more safely, and more effectively. And here's where the Nebula program comes in. This is a program that is designed for people interested in applying open, open principles in their work, not just individually, but also what we hope is that these practices that you will learn, you will also share them with your communities, with people around you, um, and that at the end of the program, you feel confident to talk about open science in a way that is sensible, um, in a way that uh, people can connect with these practices and help spread them. When I'm, when I'm talking about open science, I really mean any research or scholarship or any research support work from any discipline, whether that is in climate research or the environment, in health, engineering, psychology, um, really any discipline. Um, and each week we will have training calls and you will also have the opportunity to meet for group coaching sessions. Um, this is a very hands-on practice program. The idea is that when you learn something, then you can apply it directly to your work. And our work is also part of the Transform the Open Science Initiative with NASA. Um, this is a mission that shares our, our objective to transform organizations and communities to a more inclusive culture of open science. So I invite you to explore the website to learn more about other organizations developing learning materials that are discipline specific. Um, and the program also builds off of our experience providing training in open science for the past four years. Um, since 2020, we have run 10 cohorts. Nebula is a new program this year, but before that we have, um, we have run other programs, the Open Seed program specifically. Um, and together um, in this cohort, people have joined uh, from over 50 countries. We have trained over 400 participants with the support of 300 um, mentors and experts and facilitators. Um, and very often people returned to other cohorts, not just as participants, but as experts and facilitators. And besides our focus on, on open science training, OLS also does research in open. These are evidence-based interventions for widening participation in research. Um, and we also have the open incubator where we provide long-term support for researchers to step up into leadership roles. So this is a little bit about our work in OLS. Um, and throughout the program, we will explore many different concepts related to open science um, and help you apply those that are more relevant to your work. You will get the chance to talk to coaches to get another perspective of how practices might or not apply to you, uh, your projects. And they might help you decide whether something is better for you, um, whether a concept or a tool um, applies more directly to your work. Um, and so the idea is to go one step at a time. Um, you already met Joe, who is our executive director. We have other people in the leadership team. Um, and the OLS team is also um, includes other staff in various different roles. We have fellows, uh, people from finance, web developers, um, design and project specific roles. So here I am. I am the project um, coordinator for Nebula, as I said. And you will also be working and hearing a lot from uh, Doa, who is a resident fellow. Um, and I'm actually, she's here in the call, so I'm gonna pass it to her to introduce herself. Um, Doa. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you all. 
and uh, it's nice uh, to start this cohort with all you all. I hope you will enjoy this cohort. I am uh, Dua Abdul Qadir. I am the resident fellow for uh, this uh, Nebula cohort, and uh, it's nice to working with Rain. And yeah, I uh, it's nice to meet you all, and I hope I can help you uh, during this cohort uh, and enjoying it. Thank you. Thank you. And here is our team, our amazing team of experts. You will get to meet them in the training sessions and for coaching as well. Uh, we're really proud that um, these experts who are part of the OLS community are also some of the people who helped develop the original training materials for NASA. So these are some of the scientists that NASA um, reached out to to help develop the, the NASA materials. And you will get the opportunity to work with them and to learn from them. Um, we actually have a few of them joining in this call. So I see Virginia here. Um, Virginia, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Irene. And hi, everyone. Really nice to meet you all and excited about this new Nebula cohort. I will be in charge of the part of the ethos. So at the beginning of what's open science, I'm really excited to hear from you in the next cohort call. Thank you, Virginia. I think we also had uh, Pauline. Yeah, uh, hello. Yeah, uh, my name is Pauline Carrega. Uh, and I'll, uh, uh, I'm part of the data team. So see you guys in November to talk a lot about uh, data management plans and open data. Thank you. Um, do we have any more experts that um, might have joined later in the call? I'm not sure because I'm, I can't see the, uh, I can see the list of participants. But Joe, do you see anyone else that I, I might have missed? I haven't spotted anyone either. And if you are here, we see, we, we're we sorry we didn't see you, but we love you so much. <laughs> yeah, but you will get to meet the rest of the team um, in the intercessions. But the OLS community is much, much bigger than that. Um, there are over 500 people who have participated or contributed to OLS. And now you are also here and we're very happy to have you. So for our first activity, we want to um, get to meet you. Uh, so let me um, share a bit of the instructions for the breakout rooms. The breakout rooms are one of the main um, components of our training calls. Um, these are kind of spaces where you meet in a small groups and get the chance to do activities together. Um, so we have a few instructions um, to make this um, spaces more welcoming and to allow participation from, from anyone. Um, so we will ask you as a first exercise to please edit your Zoom name. We want to see an S in front of your name if you prefer to be in a room for a spoken participation. And we want to see a W in front of your name if you prefer written participation. I'm going to give people one or two minutes to change their names. And we will use this information to design and to create the, the breakout rooms. So again, just... Is so. it worth, um, yeah, walking through how you would edit the name on the computer? Yeah, that's a good idea. So the way that I could edit my name, I when I see my, my screen, I see three points, three small dots on the top right uh, corner of my of my name and then I can uh, click on the menu and the very last option it says rename when I click on that it um, kind of pops up a kind of a, an enter a name below and then I can add um, either an S or, or a W and then I click change and my name is now different. 
I have I see an S in front of my name. Um, I'm not sure if different versions of Zoom have different um, processes, but um, Joe, you see if most people have now um, added their preference. Give me a moment or two more. I'll sort them out. Um, and maybe anyone who couldn't change it, help help them sort it out manually. <laughs> yeah. So again, this is our first, very first tiny activity. Um, and we're spending a little bit more time during this call going through these steps because we're going to be repeating this in every session. This is one of the practices that we um, see that are most useful for participants because some people might prefer um, just participating in, in written form, either in the Zoom chat or in the notepad. And that's why we have these different options. Um, yeah. Has everyone already added their preference? Uh, I need a little more info from Abdul, Alan, and Alua Funmilayo. I'm going to okay. tell you what, I'm going to open the rooms. I have four rooms ready, so I'll open them for them and we'll figure out the last few and send them in. Yes. Oh no, you've so, you've got it, uh, Raina. You've got you 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 did it. <laughs> okay, so a few more instructions before people join the breakout rooms. Um, we ask you to please be kind and respectful, as Joe was saying at the beginning. Um, we are a very diverse group joining from different countries from different time zones. Um, people are joining from their evenings or their very early mornings. Um, and so please take the time, take some time to introduce yourself. Try to take turns to allow everyone to participate. And the main question that we are inviting you to share is what brings you here? Um, what has been your journey to being here? What is your interest and your motivation? We will have 15 minutes, um, and so everyone will have time to share. Please take turns. If you are in a written room, use the Zoom chat or the notepad. We have a section for that. Um, and so, yeah, we can open the breakout rooms and please join them. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. Yeah, Irene, I a little bit too early opened the rooms. I think some people are in rooms wondering what to do now. So we might want to copy and paste the instructions with a broadcast. Yeah. And also I'm going to, um, I'm going to do that. And also I'm going to ask our experts here, Rikina, Pauline, if you can join one of the breakout rooms and share the instructions as well. Thanks. Yeah, so I'm going to share my screen again. Let's see. Um, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Let me put it in the in full screen mode. Okay. So. We have already shared a little bit about OLS. You have had um, some time to get to know each other. And now I want to dive into more specific things about the Nebula program and what you will learn in the coming weeks. Um, so this is a preview of the training sessions that you will be joining. Um, we have five modules for five weeks 
we will start this week is um, an introduction to open science. This is what we call ethos of open science. That means the principles of open science, um, the values of open science. And you have already met Virginia. She will be giving the training session on what is open science and why it is important. Uh, sharing uh, more resources about that. Um, we also have sessions on tools. So that is how to design a project openly from the start as with Japsia. And uh, open licenses is one of the foundational concepts and tools from open science. And we will have a session early on in the program dedicated to, to, to this topic. And also just uh, throughout the program, we will be repeating concepts like uh, metadata, documentation, repositories, and persistent identifiers. And so because these are concepts that um, apply to data and code and results, we have a session dedicated to that. So this is just learning uh, you know, some technical tools and concepts about open science. Then we have a module on data. Uh, what is open data? What are the fair principles and how to implement a data management plan? We have a session on code, which is an introduction to open code and also um, a skill up session that is um, very practical. And we will end the program uh, with a session on open access and free brains. But training is only one component of the program. Um, as you are seeing already during this training session, uh, we always have very structured facilitation. We are using the notepad as our agenda for the whole meeting. Uh, you will find all of the resources linked there. Um, so it is one of the main tools that we use and it, it is one of the practices, practices that is developing, helping also develop a skills for collaboration. Um, the breakout rooms, you already had the opportunity to see how they are structured during the sessions. Um, and the code of conduct is another of the foundational tools in, in our program, but also in open science more widely. And throughout each training session, we will be repeating these components, uh, not just because they allow us to have like better um, a structure of meetings, but also because we're kind of modeling practices in open science that are hopefully also useful for you and your communities and in your work. And another big component of the program is the coaching sessions. This is an optional component. This is additional to the training sessions. Uh, we will organize thematic group coaching with very small groups, up to three participants with an expert. This will be happening during three, during weeks three, four, and five. Um, and the idea of the training sessions is that you get some feedback about how concepts or tools in open science apply to your work specifically. Um, so experts will be able to answer your questions um, and I'm kind of share with you some real world applications for open science and also be able to recommend kind of specific resources for your needs. The way that this is going to work is at the end of this first week, once you have had a chance to get to know the program, get to know a little bit about um, your fellow participants in the cohort, we will ask you to fill out a template where you will tell us a little bit more about your work and about questions that you need support in. This will, uh, we will send an email at the end of the week. So please be patient with us. Um, and it, that template, that document will be your ticket to access coaching sessions. Once we understand the type of questions that people are interested in in the cohort, we will arrange meetings with the coaches um, and we will have a spreadsheet for, to do all of that. So please don't worry uh, so much about too much about it. Um, this will be kind of instructions that we will be repeating in the coming weeks. But this is just giving you a preview of another um, one of the big components of the program that is very unique to OLS. Uh, this opportunity to meet with coaches um, for you to kind of have time to interact with them 
and to ask questions, uh, to bring your own projects to, to the sessions. And finally, uh, we also want to learn from you. At the end of the program, we will have three sessions dedicated to presentations from your work. And we want to learn what you, um, what you were able to connect uh, from concepts and tools of open science to your work. Uh, and also your next steps. How are you applying the, the practices that you learned into your own work? Uh, this will be very short presentations, just five minutes. Uh, but hopefully by this point, you will be familiar with many tools. You will have already met with um, coaches uh, to understand, understand more specifically how different practices apply to your work. And this is one of the graduation requirements for, for the Nebula program. So at the end, at the end of your presentation, at the end of the program, you will receive an oil certificate and also a NASA digital badge, which is the one that I am showing here. Um, this will be digital in the sense that um, this is linked to your ORCID account. Um, so it's not just this image, it is a, it comes with a unique identifier that certifies your participation in the program. Um, so yeah, this is, this is all I have to share for now about the program. And for our next activity, what I invite you to do is to share your questions about the program in the notepad. So I'm gonna stop my screen for now. And Joe, do we have a link to the line in the notepad? We will momentarily. I am just fetching it. Uh, it's line 141, and I am popping that into the chat. Now, if you click there, grab a bullet point. Bullet points come for free. Um, any questions, nothing is too silly. Um, and especially if you think it's silly, trust me, three other people in the call are thinking it, but didn't have the nerve to say it. So please, please ask them. <laughs> Yeah, and this is also an exercise. Um, the notepad is one of the tools, as I was saying, that we use the most in the program. Um, we usually are also keeping an eye, or are, are always keeping an eye on, on the notepad. Um, we kind of look at the comments and look at the questions, and it is kind of a space for us to keep documentation of, of the meetings. Um, just in the same way that we're using it as our script for the meeting, it is also um, kind of the, the place where people who were not uh, able to join a meeting can look back and see what they missed and maybe even share back resources that they have. So again, please, everyone, if you have any questions, go to the notepad. We're going to give uh, one minute or two for people to share any questions that you have. And I'm starting to see several questions coming in. Um, again, like when people are participating, it becomes really kind of lively. And um, it's really nice people engaging with other participants and contributions as well. So one of the things that we um, do is also, if you share the same question that someone else, you can add a plus one at the end of the question. Um, or if you agree with a comment, or if you uh, um, kind of are sharing a similar concern or other things, 
then you add a plus one and that let us know that that's a question that many people have. Um, so that's also good to know. That's also one way to you engage with, with the contributions of other participants. Um, and I'm seeing, for example, can this training apply uh, for marine scientists? And actually, Virginia is a marine scientist herself. Um, so yeah, it applies to many different ways. Um, okay, so what are the kind of software available to us, um, to participants in the program? In the software module, in the code module, we will learn from Johanna and Aman several different tools that are widely used in open science. This includes version control. Uh, it, it is an introduction, so there isn't a particular software or tool that um, we are requiring people to use. Um, yeah, but there are kind of many different resources that will be shared about that are related to, to open science and open code. Um, are we going to work on a practical mini research project? There is a project requirement in the program. Uh, what we encourage you to do is that you try to kind of make connections between your work, your ongoing projects, and the tools that you are learning in the program. Um, and here's where the coaching sessions um, are really going to be kind of most useful because those will be the spaces where you can take your questions, um, your work, your current projects, and ask um, for support um, and ask for resources and feedback that is specific to your work. So no, there isn't a project requirement. Uh, we're more encouraging people to work on their ongoing projects um, and their current research. So um, there's another question after the program in order to show what you've learned, can there be a way to mark my research? Um, I'm not sure I understand this question, but what I can share is that the digital badge by NASA, it is uh, again, a digital certificate that you can share um, to your ORCID account. And so that's a way of like certifying that you have uh, the training in open science and basic practices in open science. Um, that's one way in, in, in which you can um, in which you can, can demonstrate the uh, uh, your learning. And yeah, what what is an ORCID? An ORCID is a unique identifier um, for researchers to kind of um, develop a a profile of their work. And so the same way that articles have um, DOIs, like a unique identifiers, then ORCIDs are an equivalent but a specific for researchers. And so when you link your NASA batch to your ORCID, that's a way of demonstrating um, your learning. Um, yeah, what are other questions? I see. Um, Can we create work groups based on the same research subject? I really encourage people to use the Slack channel uh, to get to know the wider OLS community because, yeah, that's where um, we have many people coming from very different disciplines. And so in this smaller cohort, you might not get to meet someone from your discipline, but asking those questions in the wider OLS community um, in the general channel or the introduction channel, that is one of the kind of a spaces to connect to other people working at the intersection of open science and their specific disciplines. So what are the questions? Um, I'm, I'm reading to this. There are a few that I am not addressing at the moment. For example, the NASA um, Open Science 101 program has some module race errors. Um, 
I'm not sure which errors are this. Um, this probably refers to the um, to the MOOC, NASA MOOC. This is the massive open online uh, course that also is inspired by the same the same training materials that we're using in this program. And so in um, yeah, so this might be just technical errors, but thank you for pointing it out. Um, and yeah, as Joe is sharing in the notepad, that is not something that we run ourselves, with, but we can share the feedback back to uh, the MOOC people. Um, so I see people are still kind of sharing more, um, more questions. We will kind of take the time to go through this and answer them directly in the notepad. Um, we might also have some time at the end of the session for an extended um, Q&A session. Uh, but for now, it is the time for us to move on to the next activity. Um, and yeah, so Joe, are we ready for the next part? Thank you. I could tell that you were like trying to let me finish the sentence before you asked me to speak. Yeah. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I've given up putting yellow replies under your questions, but more will come probably from someone who's not me whilst I'm asking you to look at the next section. So um, as I mentioned at the introduction to the call, um, we we take everyone's well-being and interactions very seriously. It's one of the most important parts um, of what we're doing is we want to make sure that open science isn't just accidentally open. We don't want to say the door is open, right? Uh, because you can say the door is open and anyone can come, but actually, you know, if there's stairs, then half the people who can't climb the stairs won't come there. And if that's talking a bit in the abstract, maybe I should make that more concrete. If people aren't friendly, nice, and considerate, people will avoid your community. Um, uh, but it's not easy to define friendly, nice, considerate, and thoughtful. Uh, so what we try to do is we try to have an explicit set of things where we say these are the kind of behaviors we do expect, and these are the kind of things that we think maybe are not acceptable. Um, and we also try to provide ways for people to say, hey, something happened, I didn't feel safe, or it didn't feel okay. Um, and then we can look into it and we can try and prevent things like that from happening in the future based on whatever it is that may have happened. Um, and so that could be um, a whole range of different things. It could be someone who's just incredibly rude all the time. Um, and don't get me wrong, if everyone has a bad day, right? Snapping once or twice is something everyone does. But there's a difference between having a grumpy day and being toxic. Um, but it could go down to things that are more more concerning as well. Um, and so what we are going to ask you to do, um, first of all, I'm going to ask if you if this is an environment that you are in, with this call, the Slack, the emails that we use, interactions and the questions and answers, what sort of behaviours would you like to see from others? Um, so if you have the notepad open and you all have been doing a great job asking all of those questions. Um, so keep it up. Um, line 171 um, and below there, grab a bullet point. I want every single person to write one behavior standard that you would like to see from everyone around you and from yourself. Uh, so I will uh, start. Uh, I will actually just say from for mine on line 171 is treat each other with the respect they would like to receive. Um, but I know you all are creative and you probably have specific examples of things that might be nice guidelines from everyone else. So please grab those bullet points and um, is, is, is the question, the ask clear here, what I'm asking? I've got some nods. All right, now, one thing you will learn about Yo, Yo is not afraid to leave awkward silences. Um, so awkward silence commences whilst everyone grabs a bullet point and just share one thing that you think is a good way, um, a good interaction rule.
plus ones are great here. You see one you love? I'll accept you're doing a plus one instead of writing your own bullet point. I think we've had a um, collision where two people have written on the same line and it's very pretty, but it doesn't quite make sense. <laughs> okay, I love these that are coming in. Keep on bringing them in. I'm going to read out a few because uh, these are these are making me feel good. Um, and I love coming out of cohort calls like all giggly. My husband laughs at me because I always come out of cohort calls giggly. But this is great. Um, so we have here respect everyone's opinion. Be polite to all. And it's been plus one. Be educated. Be patient with people who are not English speakers. I just want to say from my heart how much I feel this and thank you for calling for calling this out in particular. Um, um I speak Hebrew um and yo hablo un poco español <laughs> but my Spanish and my Hebrew aren't as good as my English and yeah it it is not nice when you're like I'm not stupid I just don't know the words in your language it is so hard so respect understand remember that someone's speaking slowly because they're hunting for a word or they're asking you what do you mean because you know they speak a different language in their day-to-day -day work in their day-to-day -day life um it's such an important one thank you whoever shared that uh, we have diversity, equity, and inclusivity. We try hard. We really try hard. But one thing I will say is we, we're always learning. Um, and if we ever need um, reminders that we haven't done something, the main thing is that communicating what's gone wrong helps create that environment um, and that we won't always be perfect first time. Uh, we have a plus one on supportive and inclusive atmosphere. Be polite with your responses. Love it. Absolutely love it. Be friendly. A really nice one. Uh, make a better community which can work together in the field of research. Uh, at this point, I just want to like go whoop, whoop, whoop. Like, you know, academia is just too well known for being unfriendly and toxic and competitive. And it's really good to see people look at this, the spirit of we're going to work together and we're going to do good. Allow everyone a chance to speak. Oh, my God, yo. I I hope you're not I hope you're not talking to me because I I like speaking. <laughs> no, <laughs> I absolutely appreciate it if people call me out for speaking too much. Uh, be considerate. Be friendly. Um, I think all the responses from the chat have been copied in, possibly by Irene. Gracias, Irene. Um, but we're not done. So now that you've thought a little bit, you've shared some of your thoughts about how we should be interacting with one another. I'm going to do another little bit of awkward silence uh, and I'm going to actually ask everyone to take three or four minutes uh, and pop and look at the RLS Code of Conduct. Given what you've just written, none of this will be surprising to you. Um, and you can skim read, look at the bold bits to really get a quick idea um, because it's, 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 a, it's, it's long and we do ask that you try to read it all. But we um, also want to respect the not everyone reads English at the same pace. It's not everyone's mother tongue. 
So uh, take two or three minutes. Um, and then if you need to add anything to the list based on things that maybe have prompted your thoughts, you do so. You time for me. Okay, um, I'm going to ask folks to practice another Zoom skill. So if you feel like you've finished reading, um, you can go to the React on the bottom of your Zoom menu. Uh, for me, that's a little uh, heart-shaped button. If you click on that, there is a green yes check mark. Um, so when, once you're done, and you're ready to move on, please add the green yes, but we will be waiting until we're confident that people have had the time they need. Um, so don't count yeses until you're ready. <laughs> Um, I'll just repeat that. Uh, so if, you, if you've read through the code of conduct, maybe you had more questions uh, or comments you wanted to add, um, add those in the chat. But once you're ready to move on to the closing, set, closing of the session, uh, once you're happy that you've read it, go to the Zoom menu. For me, that's on the bottom of the screen where it says React. Uh, for me, it's also a little heart-shaped icon. And I, when I click on that, then I can see a little circle green check mark like is on uh, lots of the pictures for everyone here. Uh, and then I click on the um, that check mark to say I'm ready to move on. Okay, and I see you've got it there as well, Himanshu. Great job. And we've got a thumbs up. All right, folks, I think we probably have critical mass. Um, I just want to take, thank everyone for taking the time to very seriously think about the ways that we interact with one another and how we can look after each other. Um, it's important. Uh, we will remind people at the end, the start of most calls just because we really care and we want to make sure that everyone feels safe and welcomed. Uh, but Irene, I will hand the reins back to you. Thank you. So we are at the close of this first session. Um, this will be a, a little bit shorter than the an hour and a half session that we usually have. 
Um, and I just want to end with a few reminders and a few recap of what we have um, accomplished in the session. Uh, we designed this welcoming session as an opportunity for everyone to become familiar with the tools that we will be using throughout the cohort. And that includes the notepad. Um, you already practice sharing your questions, adding plus ones and reactions to other people's uh, contributions. Um, and you've also um, kind of had the opportunity to join breakout rooms. That's another component that we use throughout all of the training sessions. Uh, you were able to change your name to add a W or an S to allow for a great end or a spoken participation. Again, a reminder, we will um, share a reminder to do this at the beginning of each session. Um, and we have also read the code of conduct. Um, this is a commitment that we take very seriously. And we also start the training sessions with um, a reminder for everyone to be kind and respectful. Um, it is very important for us in OLS to um, kind of create a safe and, and welcoming environment. And all of these practices, the notepad, the breakup rooms, um, allowing different modes of participation and the code of conduct um, all contribute to creating this environment. And now that we have that you have these skills, um, the next sessions are going to be more hands-on practice and more specific to the technical topics of open science. Um, so, yeah, um, I I'm going to share the link to the notepad for the closing session. I am on line one hundred and ninety-six, and. In this part, I added the our preferred channels for communication. Um, so if you have any other questions about the program, um, questions about uh, maybe you didn't receive this like invitation, then you can write us an email at nebula cohort management at weareoles.org. That email um, kind of arrives to several OLS team members. So if I cannot answer immediately, then Doa, a resident fellow can answer or Joe can answer. Um, we also have like individual emails, but we prefer that you use this kind of group email uh, because then it does, it's not just arriving to, to my inbox. Um, yeah. We also have the Slack channels. And as our last activity for the, the session and as a homework for you to do after the session is to introduce yourself in the Slack channel. Um, you have been already uh, um, kind of sent an invitation and we have a channel specifically for introductions. I know some of you already um, starting sharing your um, yeah, your introductions a little bit before the, the session, but that is one small kind of homework that I encourage everyone to do because the Slack community um, is kind of the space to keep in touch with everyone in the cohort, with everyone in the extended wireless community. And it's also a space where you will kind of stay if you want after the cohort ends. So um, it's, a, it's a really big community. Um, I encourage everyone to um, introduce yourself there. Um, I see one question about a WhatsApp group. We do not have WhatsApp groups. Um, we use the Slack instead. And again, like it's a very, very active um, kind of channel for communication. Um, I encourage you to kind of explore it and, and use it. Um, Joe, do you have anything to add? A little, yeah. Joe, you're muted. Yeah, I know. It's, I mean, I've only been doing this for who knows how many years. Why should I? <laughs> uh, so a little comment on WhatsApp groups. Um, and I think normally we would say if there was a critical mass uh, that would say, oh, if this is the way you want to communicate, we'd like to communicate in this way. 
But I think for WhatsApp, I would be a little bit more cautious, partly because we want to make sure that our mentors and um, the, all of the RLS team is able to switch work off at the end of the day. And WhatsApp has a way of following you around inside of your phone that you really can't switch off. And I don't know about you, but the thought of getting a message from my boss at 10 p.m. and like not being able to switch it off just sounds super exhausting. Uh, so we hear you. I think in this case, it's probably a little bit too hard to separate life from work. But otherwise, I'd say it's a pretty cool idea and uh, to keep ideas coming on like this. And or create your own to share with your cohort if that's of interest. Uh, but I think it would be voluntary from the RLS staff. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Um, so those are, those are our last reminders about our next steps. We have the second training session this week on Thursday with Virginia uh, about the principles of open science. And then as I was saying, at the end of the week, you will receive an email with a template to fill out for your coaching sessions. Um, yeah, so that is all for today. Again, I'm really, really happy to have you all here. Um, and I'm really excited about the cohort. Um, Joe, do you have any last words? You make it sound like I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Um, it's been fun to hang with y'all for an hour and a half, and I'm looking forward to the next few weeks. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stop the recording now.